Hey YouTube, this is Colin, also known as Deja Vu. This is my fourth time recording this video because I've noticed I've been rambling a lot, so hopefully I'll be more succinct to the point. But today, I would like to talk about, um, or maybe not talk about, but this is a video I'm making for like, this is a video I would have made for Colin of six or seven years ago, because uh, I've been producing music for a while, um, you know, I've ghost produced tracks, and I teach people how to do it. Uh, so even though I'm not like, you know, playing Ultra all the time or making YouTube videos about people buying me my specific favorite type of Starbucks latte at the concerts I'm playing at, um, that was a diss at somebody very, very particular, but it's actually cool. So uh, anyways, that diss aside, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you my perspective because I think it's the perspective of a lot of people who haven't made it yet and, you know, might make it one day, but, you know, you just, this is what's most likely going to happen to you throughout your musical career. Um, you'll be in this, I guess, current state that I'm in right now. So I wanted to give you my, the perspective here because I think we too often get the perspectives of people who've already made it, like the survivorship bias thing. And like, oh, wow, Martin Garrix, how'd you do it? He's like, I never gave up, you know, in this great Dutch accent. And, you know, with all these guys. And yeah, it's, yeah, that's true to a certain extent, but it's, <laughs> I think it, you need, you can fucking don't listen to me if you don't want to, but. I think it's interesting to hear the perspective of somebody who's been doing it for so long, like yours truly, um, made it, got successful to a certain extent, um, or at least is good enough to a certain extent, but you know, hasn't achieved the same levels of success. And yeah, what advice would they have for people starting out? Because this is most likely where you're going to end up. Um, so be prepared, be prepared for that. So Colin, of seven years ago, the first piece of advice I would give to you is motivation. It's about why you should be doing this. Um, yeah, you shouldn't, and I don't think you did, but maybe to six that you did, you shouldn't be getting into music because you want to get chicks or you want to be playing on Ultra and stuff like that. Like, that's, I mean, you could have those motivations. Those are cool. Those are nice side products. But if that's the main reason you're in it, <laughs> choose a better field, like learn pickup or something like that. It's just, you, you're going <laughs> to, if you have that sort of motivation, you're going to burn out so fast, like in, within a year or two. Um, and that's one thing I noticed myself. Um, I definitely, you know, we were around year four or five because I was doing this, like, I want to make a living for this and do all that. Like, because I wasn't doing it and it wasn't working out, I burned out. Like, and I took a good six months off from producing for a while because it just, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't working out. And production had become less something I enjoyed doing for itself and more so a means to an end. Um, yeah, so, Colin, of, you know, whatever or <laughs> call it in another life, or whatever producer's starting out, you want to be in this game for the long run. You have to enjoy the process. That is what needs to motivate you. You should not be in it primarily because you can get famous, or get a bunch of chicks, or make a ton of money from it. Because um, you're most likely not. And when you realize that, you're just going to, you know, you're going to burn out, you're going to stop. But if you instead motivate yourself on the process of getting up, battling against writer's block, sitting down at that piano, not knowing what the fuck you're gonna write, just letting your mind create where it's gonna create, and most of it's gonna suck, but then, you know, occasionally one track is gonna be great, and then that one track you send to all the labels, and then they all turn you down, so then you do it again, and you create another great track, and then one label turns you down, and then all, all the labels turn you down, but one of them says, oh, it might be good, but it was just the wrong time. Um, that's what needs to motivate you. You need to enjoy the process of sucking. Um, yeah, and just enjoy the process of doing this over and over again, because, you know, you may never play it all. You may probably will not likely ever do that. But, so don't place your ego in stuff you can't control. That's, <laughs> I guess, another thing to learn. Like, you can't control whether or not you play Ultra. You can't control whether or not this label's gonna sign you. What you can control is whether you showed up every day to this piano, this production software, and whether you gave it you put in an hour, two hours of work, you get, you created the track, you created the shitty track, you got feedback, you took that feedback, you made yourself a little bit better. That is what you can control, and that's what you need to motivate yourself by. Yeah, motivate yourself by stuff you can control. Because if you motivate yourself by stuff you can't control, like, you know, public, pray, like, you know, public, lo people loving your tracks and stuff like that, it's, it's not sustainable. Um, yeah, this is actually something where <laughs> even big producers, they still struggle with it. Yeah, so that's the biggest piece of advice. What motivates you should be stuff that's in your control. What's in your control is the process of just sitting at the studio every single day and sucking and getting a little bit better and getting a little bit better. And yeah, just putting yourself out there. And what's, you know, yeah, that's the first thing. Second thing, Colin. 
first three or four years, don't worry about marketing or any of that bullshit. Um, yeah, you need to create tracks that are so good that they kind of market themselves. Like if you think about the best tracks you've ever heard of, um, Scary Monsters and Ice Sprites, or I don't know, that's a lot of people, I think it's okay. But um, Take your favorite track. That track didn't really need a whole lot of marketing. You heard it probably from a friend, and you heard it and you're like, what the fuck, this is great. And you told all your other friends, and it just kind of marketed itself. Why? Because it was so good that it marketed itself. Like, yeah, okay, initially there might have been some, you know, 10 or 20% of why it was so successful is because there's some people who put it on the major radio stations so people could hear it. But at the end of the day, 80% of why the track was marketed or blew up is because the track itself was good. So, just to be blunt with you, Colin, <laughs> and I've produced seven or eight years, um, those first three or four years of tracks you made, mm, Think about year four is when you start getting good enough where you could probably get a YouTube channel to release it. But definitely not a label. That was about year five or year six, I think. Um, so, yeah, don't worry about marketing or finding labels um, for those first three or four years. Instead, what you should focus on is making a track, making that absolutely goddamn shitty track, sending it to producers who are better than you. You know, forums, there's Layback Luke forums, there's Reddit, there's find a producer forum with a bunch of people who are better than you and ask him, hey, this is what I created. Here's what I'm trying to create, because you you know, it's an artistic thing. There's no right or wrong. This could technically be good, um, but if you're going for, if you're aiming for a certain thing, um, you should tell people what you're aiming for, and then you have people give you feedback, like, oh, this is what you're trying to create? Here, try, you wanted to make your track, bra track brighter, but it sounds really dark right now. Um, add white noise, or you want, you know, you want more energy in your track. Um, try side-chaining a few elements. Um, yeah, that's what you should focus on for those first three or four years, not, oh, should I get this Facebook ad here or here? Or should I get an Instagram channel? Or damn man, I think this TikTok thing looks like looks like it's working out. No. Focus on getting good first. Then worry about marketing. I think even a good signal of whether you're good enough is that you get people starting to ask you questions. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Um any last piece of advice to myself? Um Yeah, I think I don't think that's it. I, I think that's it. Those are like the two pieces of advice I've given to myself um, starting out. Is one, you should be motivated because you love doing this and you love the process and you should put your ego and why you can do this around stuff you can't control because everything else outside of there, all the labels, all the glory of fame, you can't control whether or not you get that. All you can control is when you sit down every fucking day and do that. And then number two, first three or four years, don't worry about marketing. Don't worry about it. That work on getting good. Once you get good, marketing becomes easier. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say to myself um, from seven to eight years perspective. I feel like I do one of these every year, every few years. Um, but yeah, from seven to eight years in time, this is what I would have told myself. So yeah, hopefully that helps out some of you new producers who might be like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago starting out and you have all these questions and you don't know the answers to them. Here's a bit of perspective for somebody who goes produce and teaches people how to do it, but isn't playing at Ultra. Take it as you may. Yeah, hopefully this helps or scares off the people that needs to be scared off from producing because it can be hard. It's also really fun. So you choose what you want to do with it.